Hello everyone, and welcome to Turtle Queen Gaming, and back to If My Heart Had Wings. It is... I forgot how intense this was getting. Okay. <laughs> because we didn't come here to look at the clouds. We came here to fly above them. Yeah, we came to pass across them. Once we had gained enough altitude, I tilted the yoke and turned the glider. Now it's time for us to go. The airflow here was calm, and we could fly without being shaken by crosswinds. In the upper parts of the sky, there were hardly any clouds, and the clear blue gradient spread out in all directions. While paying attention to our rate of descent, we traveled along the space of crystal clear light. We are approaching the passage of light. A rolling airflow occurs around the clouds, and if we can ride that, we can pass along the passage of the clouds as far as we want. We finally arrived. The morning glory was right there, at our fingertips. And as I thought that, we better not crash. Okay, we're crashing! Fuck me! All of a sudden, it happened. As our view swung around, the divine road of cloud that should have been in there in front of us in the space of a moment was getting further away. We suddenly lost lift, and then a few moments later, we realized that the glider was rapidly descending. Well... We're gonna die! I quickly pulled at the yoke, but there was no response. The field of vision span around, and we couldn't even figure out if we were facing up or down. What is this? What's going on? Is it a stall? However, there are no signs that it was gonna happen. It was just like... Yes, it was like there was no air, and we had lost all of our lift. We're falling! What is it? What happened? They're falling! No way! Give me the binoculars! This is bad. What happened? Owie! Owie, come in! Owie! I'm a little busy. Falling to my death! Ugh. I can't deal with that right now. The surface of the lake appeared from the other side of the canopy. We were falling with the nose pointing straight down. Owie! I'll level it out! In the heat of the moment, I didn't know which controls I used. Anyway, I tried to lift the nose up and stabilize the wings. Whoa! Did I win? A shock ran through me that felt like the fuselage might be crushed. To us, the pilots, the vibration passed through our bodies, and for a moment I thought that we had crashed. Okay. May have peed myself a little. <laughs> Are we okay? Looks like it. The nose and the wings leveled out and the glider had gained lift and was floating. We were 200 meters from the surface of the water. In a moment, we had fallen almost 800 meters. If it was a few seconds later, it would have been too late. My whole body trembled with fear and relief. Are you alright, Imani? Yeah. Somehow. Her shoulders were shaking, but her reply was okay. What the hell happened just now? There were no signs that the airflow had become separated from the main wings. In other words, a stall. It is often said that it can occur without warning, but for it to occur somewhere that had such stable airflow... We might have been caught in a strong downward draft. You mean just now? If that were true, it was pretty strong. Did, did things like this really happen? In the summer, in the vicinity of the center of the lake or big rivers, it seems that sometimes downbursts occur. Downbursts are powerful downward drafts. If a downburst, a giant mass of air, falls to the earth, it is powerful enough to cause severe damage. If we were swallowed by something like that, we wouldn't stand a chance. But we gotta get back up there. Ugh! The place... 
where we were was in the vicinity of the center of the lake, like Amani was saying. We were so distracted by morning glory that we had lost sight of our own position. Because of the lake, they are cool. Ooh, excuse me. And it's possible that a downward draft would be created. If the air itself falls down, a glider which floats using the power of the air would have no choice but be to be taken down with it. That might be why we lost lift and fell suddenly without any warning signs. Ellie! Oh Amani! Oh oh Please come respond! We heard Katori's tearful voice over the radio. We're okay. Somehow we managed to level it out. What a relief. What on earth happened? We don't know. Amani said we might have been caught in a strong downward draft. A little more and we would have been upside down in the lake. Hey, Katori's heart's gonna stop, you know? Sorry, but we're alright now. What was that? What happened? I don't know. It could have been a malfunction, or they were caught in a strong downward draft. But... Yes, somehow they managed to level it out before they fell. That was really close. If they had any... Or if they were any later, they would have died. I guess it's dangerous for people to fly through the air. Yes. For, for humans who don't have wings to aim for the sky, they need to be brave. It's dangerous, too. But even so, people who can't fly... Sis? The morning glory! Ah! I quickly looked above. The place where we were just now is much further away. It's dazzling to think that we were up so high. Let's go up one more time. It's no good, Aoi. We won't make it in time. Really? We won't know unless we try. As I shouted, I looked at the sky. At some point, the dawn sky had disappeared, and the sky was now filled with a clear blue color. Exposed to the sunlight, the passage of cloud was nothing like it was in the beginning, and it was thinning out and gradually disappearing. I turned the glider towards Windmill Hill. Yeah, if we have the powerful thermal from before, we might be able to make it. I will take Amani there. That's enough for now. But we weren't able to go to that place, but I was able to see, even if for just a short moment, the sight that Asuka wanted to show me. That is enough. Amani. Amani looked through the canopy at the clouds above. This is goodbye. Amani's whisper, along with the passage of cloud, faded away into the sky. Blarg. It's the last day of summer holiday. Amani? Huh? Hey there, Aoi. Why are you up so early? That's my line. You weren't in the dormitory, so I thought you might be here. I woke up early, but didn't see Amani anywhere, and all her things in her room were carefully packed away. Yeah, I thought I'd tidy everything up before the others come back. I'll soon be going to my dad's lab. Today is the last day of summer holiday. In other words, the day that Amani leaves the school. We still have one more day, though. Mm. Hmm. But there's nothing left to do, is there? Everyone was planning to get up before dawn again and go to the runway. We didn't think that a miraculous phenomenon would occur two days in a row, but even so, we wanted to believe that there was a slight chance. However, I knew that we wouldn't be able to do it again so soon. At the time, we were caught in the downward draft, and then forcibly pulling up the aircraft meant it's... A uh, it sustained huge g-forces, damaging the parts of the glider. It's possible to fix it, but at the very least, there was no hope that we'd be able to fly today. So, I'm thinking that Amani does leave. I'm not sure, like, for how long or whatever. 
but we're gonna end up building her design aircraft and actually watching for morning glory again that's gotta be a thing uh, it's possible to fix it but at the very least there was no hope that we'd be able to fly today Monty's objective was to fly it to the morning glory now that goal had been achieved there was nothing left to do You haven't seen any of the others, have you? No. Why not? Because this year's summer holiday was so fun. It's hard for me to leave this place. I'm sorry, but could you say something to them for me? I'm not much of a talker. Amani speaks with a really troubled look on her face and continued to pack all the things she had organized into a large travel bag. She's been living here for a long time, so she has a lot of personal items. I'll help you carry it. No, it's okay. It's mostly things I don't need anyway, so I'll just leave behind anything I can't carry. Amani speaks with the, while gazing at her desk, which is still cluttered. As she looks it over, she, her gaze stops at the photo frame. Are you leaving this behind too? Yeah. She smiles as if to say, even if I took it with me, I wouldn't know what to do with it. Seeing her sad smile made all the feelings of regret that I'd bottled up come pouring out. I... I'm gonna continue it. I'll improve, and I'll definitely fly to the morning glory in the glider that you and the others have made. Sure. Amani nods, and after thinking for a moment, puts down her bag and stands in front of me. She takes my hand and holds it gently. In the garage, which doesn't have any air conditioning, it's as hot as a sauna. My hands are covered in sweat, but hers are as smooth and as soft as freshly washed sheets. Then Amani, with eyes like a little kid's, but a little more grown up than yesterday, looks me in the eyes. Thank you, Howie. Thanks to you guys, in the end, I was able to go to that place. To the sky that, until now, I'd been only able to look at from below. As Amani speaks, she has a small yet fulfilled smile. How about Asuka's feelings? I wanted to ask her if she understood the reason why Asuka had become so obsessed with gliders. To be honest, I still don't really know. But it's been decided. So thank you. Amani shuts her eyes and hugs me gently. To tell the truth, I thought I was going to cry. Use the things in here however you want. The winch of the runway is equipment that belongs to the soaring club. What about these designs? The designs had been left on the drawing board. I finished them last night, but I don't need them anymore. I'm sorry, but if you don't need them, just throw them away. I couldn't do that. Well then, if I don't get going, I'll miss my bus. Amani puts her bag on her shoulder. She staggers slightly under the weight. I'll walk you to the bus stop. Okay, thanks. I'm so sad. This is depressing. She gives a smile as crisp and sunny as the summer sky to the garage and leaves it behind. The garage where she spent so many years shut away inside. <laughs> it really was the most fun summer ever. The next day. The first day of the new school term. What are we going to do now that we don't have enough members? Oh, crap, that's right! <gasps> We can't ask Anshan to help every time we want to do a flight, so that... Or, what should we do about transporting the glider? What should I do about getting my pilot's license? While feeling downhearted and a sense of loss now that Amani had left, we discussed our plans for a club on the way to school in the morning. It doesn't really matter. Tobioka Dick is gonna, like, fucking shut down our club. When it comes to continuing the activities of the Soaring Club, Katoria Geha and I are all the same opinion. Next time, we'll definitely fly there to the Passage of the Clouds. Our dream that we were so close to, but had not yet achieved. However, it was there, right at my fingertips. With that sense of reality, the dream was no longer just a dream. We are now we all had a clear goal in mind. All three of us are yeah. All three of us had clearly envisioned this in our minds. That's why we don't have time to feel down. The thing that awaited us was... An unbelievable spectacle. They tore down the garage! 
What is this? They can't, they wanted, the whole point was they wanted to use the big fucking building for space. No entry was written on the signboard, and on the other side, heavy machinery had made a hole in the wall of the garage and smashed in the roof. No way! What's going on? Katori and Ageha are lost for words for this horrific spectacle. I stood there, stunned, and desperately tried to think of what could have happened. But there's no way I could comprehend it. The place that, until yesterday, where we would gather and spend time together every day, had suddenly been destroyed. Our garage! My knees were shaking. I felt like all the strength I had left my body, and then intense rage burned inside me. What the hell is this about? As I approach the person who seemed to be the foreman, he looks at, just looks at me with a troubled look on his face. Of course, these people have been asked to do this. They're just doing the demolition work. But I had no other outlet for my emotions. Why are you doing this? I had no choice. This is what was promised from the beginning. Bullshittery! Tobioka. Mr. Tobioka? Mr. Tobioka just glared at me like I was being unreasonable towards the workers. Meaning, if I had any complaints, then I should talk to him about it. Well, we're gonna fucking talk about it! Oh, I'll talk to him about it, alright! What is this all about? I've told you before. After the summer holiday is over, the Soaring Club is over. This place is planned to be demolished. Even though we're still here? You don't have enough members to be recognized as a club. We have tolerated you until now, but you will not, or, but will not allow it any longer. You didn't even give us a chance to find new members! That's a form of oppression! It was accepted that we had the freedom to carry out our club activities! If you want to carry out your activities, feel free, but it will be as a society. Tobioka, you son of a- Are we? Without thinking, I was about to go nuts, but Ageha stopped me at the last moment. Aoi, you mustn't. She shakes her head in frustration. <laughs> Don't get in the way of the work. Besides, you're already too late. You didn't give us, even give us a chance to clear it out! With those his parting words, Mr. Tobioka turns to leave. We stare dumbfounded at the demolition works. Like he said, we were already too late. We finally found something that I want to do. Now? I've never had anything like this before. Yeah. Ria hardly says anything as she quietly watches the demolition. As for me. Hey, Aoi! I climbed over the no entry fence and walked in the garage. Hey, you! What are you doing? This place is dangerous. Well, your fucking assholes didn't let us clear it out, so I'm gonna get my stuff, you fuckers. The foreman from before hurriedly rushes over. Sorry, this won't take long, I say as I push past him. Then I step inside the half-destroyed garage. Panicking, the foreman stops the machinery. Owie! 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 The inside of the garage was also badly crushed, smashed the smithereens along with all our memories. Emotionless, I rummage through it and pick out the things I was looking for. Sorry about that. It's okay now. I lower my head in a bow of apology to the workers and step outside the no-entry borders. Let's go. We are gonna build Amane's design. <laughs> fuck that guy. Oh, fuck that guy. These teachers get too big for their britches, don't realize that they're there to encourage students. Fuck that guy. Owie? Is that... These are the designs that Amani drew. She said that she had completed them yesterday. Amani's designs? Then there was a photo, f the photo frame from Amani's desk. Inside was the photo that had stirred us all into action. It's not over yet. Huh? I smiled at them with empty bravado, with a, s a smile as bright as the midsummer sun. I can't let it end like this. We will definitely fly in our glider. Katori, looking like she was going to cry, smiled at me. <laughs> yeah! Ageha, who had a defeated expression on her face, smiled once again. <laughs> Alright. A giant thunderhead was floating in the clear blue sky. 
It is said that such clouds often go beyond the stratosphere, which means that the upwards dra drafts go all the way up there. Our dream isn't over yet. This is just the beginning. Okay, okay. That's... <laughs> that was really cool. That was a great video, oh my god. This, like, the value of this game, it's just amazing. <laughs> this is really nice. This is a really nice, uh, well fleshed out game for, its, for like, $20. I, I am extremely happy that I purchased this game. Unlike Always Remember Me, which was a huge honking disappointment. <laughs> I hate, I hate, I hate that I keep hating on that game, but it was really fucking awful when I could do, like, heartstring bugs, which was amazing, and it was completely free, and you're gonna charge me $20 and just, like, not even bother with the story, which is the whole point of this entire game series, is the story. But, I get it now. We're gonna be able to keep being a club because these twins are gonna join us. It's gonna be a thing. Which I finally found voices for them, so that's good. Be even though, uh, uh, Asa Girl A is, uh, gonna sound a lot like the voice that I'm doing for Hotoru, but that's okay. <laughs> but, I'm actually going to cut it here because, uh,. I feel like I don't want to get into it just to cut it five minutes in, like, that it'll just, it, it'll ruin, like, th 
this whole experience of a new beginning as we enter the second part of the game. So, <laughs> until tomorrow, peace out, y'all.